In a previous video, we saw where exactly in the cell, cellular respiration was taking place. We also saw that at the end of cellular respiration, energy is produced in the form of ATP. We ended the video by asking a question, why is energy produced in the form of ATP? What is the use of this ATP? In this video, we will talk about why glucose from which energy is obtained is converted to ATP and what makes ATP so special that it is used as the energy currency in all cells. So first of all, what is ATP? ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Tri here means three. So it has three phosphate groups. Before we begin to understand why ATP is produced in the cells, let's take a recap of how many ATPs are produced from one molecule of glucose. One molecule of glucose by the process of aerobic respiration yields around 38 molecules of ATP. Now this is just an ideal number. The actual number of ATP molecules produced from one molecule of glucose is actually less than this. Now this is just from one molecule of glucose. Say you take a slice of bread. Just imagine how many molecules of glucose would be there in that bread. It would be too many, right? If the bread were to be digested into so many molecules of glucose and each of those glucose was broken down by aerobic respiration to give ATP, just imagine the number of ATP that can be produced from this one slice of bread. Well, that's going to be a mind-boggling number. That is exactly why cells prefer to store the energy in the form of ATP. You see, when one molecule of glucose is broken down, an enormous amount of energy is released. And the cells don't know what to do with so much of energy at once. A lot of this energy at most times is dissipated in the form of heat as well. And that is just a waste of energy. So for cells to not waste this energy, they store it into smaller packets of energy or smaller pockets of energy called ATP. And whenever needed, the ATP molecule is broken down and the energy that is released in that breakdown is used to power the functions of the cell. To understand this better, let's take another analogy. Say you receive a check for 2000 rupees and you have to split this 2000 rupees between your four friends. You cannot just rip this piece of paper into parts and give it to your friends, right? they would not accept it. They would be quite angry if you did that. That would mean nothing to them. How then would you split this 2000 among your four friends? You would need to convert this bigger amount into smaller amount like say 500 and then distribute it among your friends. That is precisely what is happening in our cells. The energy stored in glucose is so huge that the cells cannot use it directly. Instead, they are broken down and stored in smaller pockets in the form of ATP so that the cells can then break down this ATP whenever needed and use it to perform their functions. This is why ATP is produced in the first place. But again, what makes ATP so special? Why is ATP produced and not any other molecule that is used as the energy currency? That has to do with these molecules that make up the structure of ATP. These bonds that you see here, they are called the phosphoanhydrous bonds and they can store a huge amount of energy. So whenever the ATP is broken down, whenever these bonds are broken, this releases energy, but in a smaller quantity. This smaller quantity of energy is enough for the cells to perform their functions. That is why when glucose is broken down, the energy is stored in the form of ATP. This energy is used to produce ATP. ADP is a molecule that's called adenosine diphosphate, di meaning two. Using this energy, a phosphate group is added to this 
a dp molecule yielding atp and whenever needed the atp is again broken down to adp and this phosphate group this releases the energy in the quantity that can be used by the cells to perform their functions that is why atp is such an important molecule because of the phosphoanhydrous bonds that can store the correct amount of energy needed by the cells